you guys here we are with the next section we are going to talk about steam tables today all right and steam tables tend to be confusing for students just because there are several different tables that you have to choose from so we're going to go through how to pick out which table that you need to pull your information from all right so we're going to spend quite a bit of time on this section before i have more than one video because otherwise they'll get kind of long um, but I spent a lot of time on here because students, like I said, they always struggle with this section, figuring out how to choose the correct table. Okay, so first for STEAM tables, if you're using the Moran book, which is what I am using, then in the back of the book, if you turn, you will see this index. Okay, so this is going to list quite a few tables. All right, now if you look here, we've got table A1. This is where we get our molecular weights. Now after that one, you'll notice we have saturated water and we got compressed liquid. We've got more saturated water. We've got a refrigerant. It goes through and it lists these substances, okay? So these are the tables that we're gonna be covering in this section. Now the tables we have two different sets of tables. This set that I'm showing you right here, these are in SI units. Now there's a whole nother set of tables that's in English units. So depending on the problem we're working, that's gonna determine which table we, we go to, okay? So keep that in mind. Now, before we actually look at the tables, let me write down where those are for those of y'all that have that book. Now the tables for water are called steam tables. Okay. And those are tables A2 through A6 in the Moran book. All right, so those are the tables that we're gonna be dealing with. If you don't have the Moran book, your book has tables, you just need to figure out where they are located. They should have the same information in them. Okay, now before we get started, let's go ahead and draw another one of the vapor domes. Just to remind ourselves what it looks like. So remember we talked about the vapor dome in that last video? And we have the constant pressure lines, the isobars they look like this. Remember, this was specific volume, this was temperature, this is the isobar. And then we had a point F, and we got a point G, okay? This region over here to the left of F, this was compressed liquid. In the middle here, we have liquid vapor. So that'll be a mixture. And then over here to the right of G, we're gonna have superheated vapor. Okay. And then also, one more thing we need to label, as we go across from F to G on this horizontal line, there's a temperature associated with this line. So let's just say, for example, it's 100, okay, for this given temperature or pressure. So this pressure, if we had 14 PSI, for example, our boiling point would be 100 degrees Celsius. Okay, so this is what we talked about last time. So with the steam tables, we're going to keep referring back to these vapor dome drawings. Okay, so just keep that in mind. Remember, compressed liquids over here, liquid vapor here, superheated vapor over here to the right. And we'll keep revisiting this as we go through. Okay, so first thing we're gonna do is gonna do something really simple. I'm just gonna show you how to pull information out of a table. So what we're gonna do is we are gonna find the properties associated with compressed liquid water at a pressure of 10 megapascal and a temperature of 220 degrees Celsius. Now this problem tells you that we have compressed liquid water. You're not always gonna be told that you have compressed liquid. So you're usually gonna to have to figure that out on your own. 
and that's what we'll work towards. But since we're told this, we know that we can go to table A5, which is the compressed liquid table in the Moran book. And if we pull that table out, this is what it's going to look like. All right, so if we look at it, you'll see that it's got different pressures, okay? And they increase as we go down, and then it's got temperatures associated with these, okay? Now notice they're starting, in this instance, we're starting at 20, we're going down to that saturation temperature. This would be that point F on the vapor dome, okay? Now, as we look over here, we've got specific volume, we've got U, H, and then S. We haven't covered S yet, we'll do that in chapter four, that, or chapter six, I mean that is entropy. So don't worry about S right now, okay? All right, so now we've got that, and one thing I wanna point out in this table, specific volume, if you notice in some of these columns, it's gonna be V times 10 to the third, and the reason for that is, is otherwise these numbers would be small. So to keep the table looking organized, they put it in this format. So if you're gonna pull values out of this column, for example, you need to divide this number by 1,000, okay? And you can see that down at the bottom, right? So if you ever see this, where it has table value divided by 1,000, that means to get the actual specific volume, you need to take this number, divide by 1,000, okay? All right, so this is what the table for compressed liquid looks like. Now, what we wanna do is we want to look at a pressure of 10 megapascal and a temperature of 220. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna find 10 megapascal, which is here, and then we're gonna locate the temperature so 220, and then we just come over to the right. So now this data right here is the data we are interested in, okay? So now you're just gonna pull that data out. All right, so in that case, we're gonna have specific volume. And it's gonna equal 1.1805, that was the number in the table. Now I need to divide that by 1,000. So specific volume is really 0 0.0011805 cubic meters per kilogram, okay? And then notice in the next one, we've got U, this is little u. This is specific internal energy. Notice the units, we got kilojoules per kilogram. All right, so we got specific internal energy. And that U is gonna be 934.1 kilojoules per kilogram. Now this value, you cannot use this directly in your energy balance equation. Because remember, energy balance had the delta capital U. So you would need to multiply this by mass to get just standard internal energy, okay? Now the next two values we haven't covered yet. The next one is called specific enthalpy. We'll get to this one a little later. But again, notice the word specific. If you pull out that value, you get 945.9 kilojoules per kilogram. So the specific, again, indicates kilogram is in the units. And then finally, that last column is specific entropy. And symbol for that is little s. So that'll be 2.5039 kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin. Again, notice kilogram shows up because this is specific entropy. And we'll talk about these two later, so don't worry that you don't know what they mean right now. Okay, but that's how you pull data out of this compressed liquid table. You just find the pressure, get the temperature, pull out the numbers, okay? So that part's pretty simple. The hard thing is figuring out what table. Now, before we go 
further, we need to look at what we have to do if the data that we need is not available in the table. Okay, so as we saw in that compressed liquid table, it doesn't have every single temperature, right? It's going in 20s here. And some of these, well, yeah, 20 to 40, and then 40 to 80, and then we go to 100, and then 140. So we're skipping a lot of temperature numbers here, and we're also skipping around in temperature or pressure because we're jumping from 25 bar to 50 bar. So the combination of values that you have might not necessarily be in the table, so we need to know how to work around that. What we're going to do is we will linearly interpolate if the data we need isn't in the tables. And you should have seen this previously in another class, so we're just going to go over a quick example so I can show you how to do it in case you have forgotten. So for this one, we are going to have superheated water vapor and we want to find the specific internal energy for that water vapor when we have a pressure of 0 0.035 megapascal and a temperature of 100. Right? And for this problem, if you're using the Moran book, you're going to be in table A4. Okay. So now what we're going to do, look at your pressure. We got 0 0.035 megapascal. So that's going to be this entry right here. So this whole little block of numbers is for pressure of 0 0.035 megapascal or 0.35 bar. All right. Now our temperature that we have is 100 degrees. Now if you look over here, we don't have 100 degrees. We have 80 and we have 120. We don't have a 100. So we're going to have to interpolate to get an answer. Okay. So from the table, what you would do is you would pull out the data points surrounding the data that you want. Okay, So I want a temperature of 100, so I'm going to pull out the data for a temperature of 80 and then 120 because these two surround my desired temperature. And I'm wanting specific internal energy, so I pull out the U values that are associated with these temperatures. So at 80, we've got 2483.7, and then for 120, we got 2542.4. Okay. Now, essentially what we are trying to do when we interpolate, if we draw this out, is we're trying to come up with an approximation. Oops, that's a four. So if we draw something that looks like this and we put these data points like that, basically we're trying to create a little line here and then at t equals 100, we want to know what this point here is. Okay, so we're going to solve for this. That's what we're doing. Now the way we do that is really simple. It's basically just looking at the ratios of the differences. And using these values, what we're going to do is we're going to take 2540 or 2542.4, subtract that from 2483.7. And then we're going to put that over the difference of the temperatures. Okay, so we started with the U for 120, so we're going to put 120 first. So I have 120 minus 80. And then that is going to equal a similar thing on the right side, but now you're going to include your unknown. So this one will put U minus 2483.17, and then put that over 100 minus 80. So 100 was our temperature for the data point we're looking for. And now what you have to do is solve for u. Okay, so you get 25, 12.55 kilojoules per kilogram. Okay, so that would be your estimate. So it's super easy to do. I'm sure you've seen it before, but I just wanted to give you a reminder that that's how you can interpolate. Okay. And some people will just take an average of the numbers. They would just add these two and then divide by two. 
And that's okay if your number is exactly in the middle, like our 100 is, you get decent approximation. But let's say you wanted the value of U at a temperature of 83, okay? Averaging these is not necessarily gonna be too accurate, okay? So, so I always use this method just to make sure I have good numbers. And that's what I would encourage you guys to do. All right, so now we've got that. Let's, let's stop there and then we'll pick it up in the next one. We'll talk about saturation tables. All right, I'll see you all in the next video.